Well, Prime Minister Netanyahu says that Israel is not ready to invade Rafah yet. It is sending a delegation to Washington after a contentious call between President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu. But for how long will that delay last? Joining us now, retired Admiral James DeVries, former NATO Supreme Allied Commander, of course, and co-author of a gripping new book, 2054, a work of fiction that looks like it's uh, torn from the pages of today's news. It looks at AI, disinformation, and more just 30 years from now. Admiral, we'll talk about the book in a second. Let me ask you about Israel, because Prime Minister Netanyahu is, you know, going full steam forward, at least rhetorically, telling the Knesset he's going to invade, speaking as we speak to the Senate Republicans, trying to shore up support there, where he probably has a lot of support. And uh, at the same time, you know, rejecting President Biden's appeals that a full-scale invasion into, into Rafa is not necessary, that you can get those Hamas battalions another way. Netanyahu yeah. says, you know, they'll lose the war. So which is it? You're the, you're the military expert. Can you get these Hamas battalions out without causing, you know, mass casualties among civilians? Yes. And uh, that is the precise reason the Pentagon is working with the Israeli military to try and uh, give them some advice and ideas. And we, the United States military, have been deeply involved in urban warfare uh, for the last 20 years in Iraq and Afghanistan. So I am hopeful that the Pentagon, working with the Israeli Defense Forces, can craft a plan. But job one, Andrew, and you know this, is to get food into Gaza for the starving Gazan people that ought to come in through the north over the land and from the sea on this pier the United States military is building, then you could shift the bulk of the one million civilians who are in Rafa in the south, shift them to the north, then you come in in a precise way against the remaining Hamas battalions. That's how I would do it. I think that's how the Pentagon is gonna advise uh, the IDF to take this mission on. Yeah, and so far, Israel has not relented on uh, yeah. really significantly opening land openings because these sea drops, you know, the sea route is very slow and very much less than what's needed. The air drops as well. <clears throat> what they really need is a full land truckload yeah. after truckload going into the north. Uh, on Capitol Hill, meanwhile, this is one of your favorite subjects, Senate Intelligence Committee Chair Mark Warner, Vice Chair Marco Rubio said that the TikTok bill is a major priority for them, but it doesn't seem to be advancing in the Senate very closely. They were speaking after a closed door briefing from senior administration officials on the intelligence of disinformation and the risks with, you know, from China with TikTok. It was Senator Blumenthal of Connecticut who crystallized the threat from the China-owned company ByteDance. We're facing the election where a lot of this information could be weaponized against the United States. It's a clear and present danger to the United States. It's a gun aimed at our heads and this collection of data and potentially using it against us really ought to require a transition of ownership. So there's the battle, the political battle. Now, you've taken it on in this great new book. And I'm in deep into it, and it is a thriller, so I'm not going to, you know, no spoiler alerts here. But this is, I guess, a sequel to 2034, your bestseller. Yeah. And, you know, why did you think it important to issue this fictitious warning about how America could lose its democracy? Yeah, this is exactly what Senator Blumenthal is talking about. And of course, it's not just China and TikTok. Russia, very adept at this, using bot farms, uh, creating real misinformation. Iran, North Korea, not far behind. And the point of the novel, 2054, Andrea, is what happens when artificial intelligence gets deeply, deeply involved all day, a political system, uh, here in the United States that already has deep divisions in it. Uh, so yes, and to go back to TikTok, Senator Blumenthal, who's a veteran, by the way, a former Marine, he's got it exactly right. Um, the real threat stream from TikTok is pointed right at the elections. I think we need a change of ownership, bite dance, a 
creature of China should not have control of this entity that is so permeated into U.S. society. Well, Admiral, you know, you, you outline the real risks here, and in your book you certainly speak to that. And it looks like the Senate is going to take its good sweet time on it, so we're going to have to wait and see what's, what's going to happen there. But you think this should, that the House bill or some version of it should be passed? I do. I think it's it's very clear the potential connectivity between TikTok, the Chinese Communist Party. That is something we cannot allow um, here in the United States. Again, particularly in an election year when there are pre-existing divisions in society. We're a pool of gasoline here, a TikTok flare fired by a Chinese Communist Party could be just the no. thing to set things off. We're going to have to leave it there. James Davidis, co-author of the new book, 2054. In the